Well, just finished meeting with the team. I can tell you guys are disappointed, coaches are disappointed. Uh, frustrating season. And uh, uh, our record does not reflect the character of the men that's in that team meeting room, I can tell you that. And we're all committed to making sure that uh, this doesn't happen again. And that process has started like last night. Talk about the frustration. What was the most frustrating part of the season for you? You know, nine losses by one score, you know. Uh, to put that, put that work in, that effort in, and to lose by one score nine times, uh, we have to be better. Uh, I'm talking about as coaches, put them in better positions, and figuring out a way to win close football games. What do you feel like the reason was for all well, this loss? Well, it, bo it boils down to execution. And, and like I said, and putting players in the right position and making adjustments. You said but, the process started last night. What did you do to, to get that process going? Just, just reflecting, looking back on the season, you know, an after action report, you know, things we did well, things we didn't do so well, things we need to do better. It's just, uh, you know, got to go through personnel. You got to go through coaching staff. And, and uh, we're just looking at everything right now. Why did you feel compelled to, to start that process? Because I can't rest until I start that process. <laughs> There's no vacation for me. You know, I can't go to a golf course right now, go lay on the beach and relax without solving this problem. And so uh, that's just the way I relax. Do you plan on making any changes to your coaching staff? Well, I mean, you're 5 and 11. I mean, everything's on the table. So I'm looking at everything, starting with myself. You already made one coaching change earlier this year mm -hmm. uh, when you bumped up Shane to the yeah. OC. Is there a chance you're going to stick with that structure, or might you hire someone else or promote someone else into the quarterback coach position? I'm just, I'm just still looking uh, at different combinations and things that I want to do. Uh, I thought Shane did a good job under the circumstances. I've been in his shoes before. It's hard to take over a team in the middle of a season. Uh, you just assume that it's his offense, but you know it's, it's, it's not his offense. It's not his terminology. Uh, I thought he did a good job with what he had. And so uh, we improved in a lot of different categories under him. So I am pleased with Shane. Is there a scenario where he would remain both uh, offensive coordinator and quarterback coach? I doubt that. Have you talked with Philip at all in terms of having an exit interview and, and what was that conversation like if he had talked? Well, I mean, my exit interviews and conversation with players, obviously that's personal, but uh, uh, I just, like I said, I just left those guys. Uh, some of those guys are going to come up after this press conference, but I, I will get a chance to speak with everyone. Do you get to kind of wait on Phil's decision to know what to do with the rest of the team and contract and stuff like that? Do I have to do what? Do you have to kind of wait on Phil to make a choice to come back or not and then after that, you can kind of figure out. No, I don't, I don't have to wait on anything. No, not at all. If you had your way in a perfect world, would Philip Rivers be your starting quarterback next year? Well, I mean, who wouldn't want a guy with those intangibles, that production? I mean, I, I mean, sure. I mean, I, but I've got a lot of guys to look at, not just Phil. And, uh, and like I say, it's early right now in that process. But, uh, I mean, I, I love what he represents and what he stands for. I feel like this franchise does a, a little bit of a crossroads considering how many years Phil has been in the league and that this could be a deep quarterback class and coming off this season like he did? Uh, I'm not sure how deep this quarterback class is because I, coaches hadn't focused on the draft yet. So as we get going in our scouting reports and, and looking at college kids, uh, we'll figure out how deep this draft is. But uh, that has no bearing on our decision making right now. Cody, given the, the significance of that position, is that is is Phillip's future something you'd like to get resolved fairly quickly, or can that sort of wait for You know, it, it, everything is timing. I mean, it, I'm sure it's going to happen sooner than later, but uh, right now, I mean, there's no rush. You, you got, there's a lot of moving pieces, obviously, but what is something that you want to address, like, immediately, right away? Well, we're looking at ourselves right now, uh, our coaching staff, and, and what we're doing on both sides of the ball and special teams, and, and about putting our players in different positions, uh, learning how to win close games. I mean, we, it's not like we've forgotten. We won a lot of close games last year, but we got to look at and, and examine why we didn't get that done this year. But so that's where my primary focus is right now. I'm not, I'm not trying to make any emotional decisions right now. I want to just evaluate what we've done and just take a good look at this, and uh, along with my coaches, and then make the right decisions. You say you look at internally. What, what internally about you? What would you personally like to improve on? Well, I mean, I'm, I want to figure it out. I mean, because we're always growing, we're always evolving. You never know how, 
until you go through some of these tough years and, and, and reflect on this season. Uh, I'll have a better idea probably in a month or so. Since you've been here, you've always been about running the ball and running it consistently. I have. I've, I've thought I've always been about winning. You know, I don't care. I don't care if you got to throw it to win or run it to win. I just, I just want to win. But I do know that when you're balanced, you know, you have a better chance of winning. No, yeah. But with that, uh, would you uh, let Tom and John know that you do want Melvin Gordon back next season uh, to keep that stable run game with him and Austin? Yeah, I love I love Melvin Gordon. I mean, he's he's fun to be around. He's a hard worker, uh, high character young man. I mean, who wouldn't who wouldn't want Melvin Gordon on that team? But like I said, we have a lot of free agents to look at right now. How do you think he dealt with the, the situation, the hold up, and everything? How, how do you think he? he I think Melvin that? would tell you uh, it affected his play early. Uh, we knew he would be a little rusty early, but we had to get him get him ready. So unfortunately, we was getting getting him ready in games, but. Uh, uh, you know, if he had to do it all over again, would he? I don't know if he'd do the same thing or not. I don't know. But uh, he would tell you he started slow because of that. As a coach, how frustrating is that? Because you have no control over it. It's, no. It's, it's a business thing. So, but it does affect what happens on the field. Um, is there anything you can, that you would have done differently to try to resolve it? Not really. I mean, that's just part of the business. Guys hold that every year. And uh, you just have to figure out ways to deal with it. You have one year left on your contract. Are you hopeful to get an extension this offseason? You know, I, I'm still on the contract last time I checked, so I'm not even worried about that. I mean, that never, you know, uh, when that contract could take care of itself, you know, once we get this thing turned around. So, so coaching one year on your contract in 2020, would that be okay with you? I would be, as long as I'm on the contract, I'm fine. And, I, you know, signing an extension, that goes both ways. You know, whether an organization offer you one or, or whether a coach turn one down. But uh, trust me, I have no problem betting on myself. Anthony, uh, this is your first time here as a head coach the last three years. How have you kind of learned and grown, you feel like, in the last three years? You know, uh, I, I, I love analytics. You know, uh, I'm probably too analytical. My golf swing is too mechanical. But uh, just using my instincts on, on when to do things in games, uh, managing games, you know, uh, there's a lot to go into that. And I know sometimes when you're at home and you're watching it and you think this and that, but it's a whole lot on that sideline that's happening that goes into those thoughts. And I just think that uh, anytime I can help put my team in position to do better and win, then uh, I think that's a good thing. So I think I've gotten better in some of those situations. You obviously believe strongly in limiting turnovers. It's one of your abilities or your philosophy yeah. as a coach. You guys were, um, if not last in the league in turnover differential among, among the line. How, how do you fix that? How do you fix the turnover, winning the turnover? I mean, that can be fixed through play calling. That can be fixed through, uh, um, you know, just personnel. You know, and so, uh, I mean, that's ways to deal with that. You can emphasize it all you want, but at the end of the day, coaches don't play. So uh, you can change the personnel. You can change play calling uh, to prevent some of those. I mean, it's, it's, it's things that we can do to fix it, but that's still an emphasis. And uh, it's, it's a huge emphasis. We've got to take the ball away as well. You know, we didn't take the ball well enough this year, and we turned it over way too much. Uh, that's uncharacteristic of this football team since I've been here. I don't expect to see that again. Do you feel like overall, like philosophically, it's easier to control turning the ball over offensively versus forcing turnovers on defense? Like, is it first forcing turnovers, I think that's more luck in the situation? As a I don't, no, I don't think that's luck. That's skill. I mean, we train to take the ball away. You know, there, there's plenty of opportunities throughout a game for a defense to take the ball away from the offense. So I. I don't think it's an advantage either way. You mentioned personnel. That's sort of a, a general term. Like when you look at fixing the turnover problem, what, what personnel specifically are you looking at? Is it the offensive line getting better protection for the quarterback? It could be the offensive line, better protection. It could be running backs carrying the ball. Better could be quarterbacks taking care of the ball. You know, it could be wide receivers uh, not falling down. I mean, it could be a lot of things. How do you generate more takeaways? How much of it scheme? Getting people to the ball. Just getting people to the ball, playing fast, physical, and yes, you can, uh, you can affect the quarterback more. Yes, you can. Another area you guys struggled in was third down defense, finished 29th in the league. That's something you were pretty good at last year and, and regressed this year. What did you identify as the main cause of the, the struggles on third down? We, we didn't affect the quarterback uh, enough, in, in my opinion. So uh, we got to do a better job of that. But and we can. There's certain things we can do personnel-wise to play tighter coverage. So, you have some pretty talented pass rushers. 
Why do you yeah. feel like you weren't able to affect the quarterback? A lot of people know we have talented pass rushers, and so we get a lot of max protection, and the ball comes out quick. What can you do to combat then if you get max protection against with the two edge guys that you have? How, how do you how do you combat that? You know, if the quarterback's going to have that kind of time to throw, then someone's going to get open eventually. Yeah. So I mean, you can you can scheme things to break down people protections to get bring one more than they can block. You know, deception. You, you can do a lot of things like that. But do you feel like you guys need to blitz more then? You know, that's some of the things that we're going to visit yeah. and talk about. How much did not having Derwin the first 11, 12 games affect getting to the quarterback? I think he's a team leader. I think he's one of the best strong safeties in the game. Not having him on the field uh, definitely doesn't help you. You know, we missed him, but. Uh, we had guys that were more than capable of getting the job done. What kind of jump do you want to see from Duro and from, from this year to next year? I know he didn't play a full right. season, but he was able to kind of get his feet wet those last five games. What do you hope to see from him next year? You know, I just want to see him stay healthy next year. <laughs> you know, he's, I don't, if he can get any better than what he I know he can get better than what he is, but he's pretty dang good right now. You know, uh, I mean, he plays fast. You know, he, he hadn't played in 12 weeks. He comes back. He's communicating more than anybody on the field. He's an intelligent football player. Uh, I just love everything about the young man, and we missed him. He's a guy that plays with a lot of energy. Do you want to see him take more of a leadership role that defense if, if his play warrants it? I think you would have seen him take more of a leadership role if he was healthy. You know, uh, you saw it in training camp. You saw it coming. So, uh, uh, yeah, we did miss that. Anthony, on offense, how, how tough was it not having Russell Okun and Mike Pounce for most of the year? Well, you know, Russell and Mike, I mean, those are two, two of the better players at their position in the league. So, uh, yeah, we love to have those guys. But I thought, I thought Q went in and did a good job. And uh, I thought uh, Trent and, and Trey, uh, you know, thought they both did a decent job over the left tackle side. We tried to give them some help at times. But they're young. Those young men had to go through some growing pains. And, uh, and they showed up at times. You're obviously not going to make excuses, but you, as Gil just mentioned, you had a lot of injuries this year. It's some of your best players. When no. You're, when you're analyzing what went wrong this year, and do you, do you look at the injuries as a factor? And maybe does you that know, affect how you look at your coaching staff and your team overall? I think, yeah, you can look at that, at the injuries as a factor and all that. But like I said, there's always a way to win a football game. And it's my job to figure out a way to get that done, regardless who's on the field. Hey, the two guys got hurt yesterday didn't finish. Sam and uh, Desmond, is there, do you have any idea of the severity of those? No, uh, Desmond was walking around in the building, so he's going to be fine. His ankles, his ankles, his high ankle sprain, and uh, same with Sam. Sam's, Sam would be fine. And then uh, Mike Pouncey told us that he's going to see a doctor next week. He hopes to continue playing. If he can come back, what, what would that mean? And, uh, how much of a boost would it be to have him? That'd be great. I mean, because Pouncey is one of the captains on this football team. He's a leader. He's a heck of a center. I mean, that would be a nice boost. How do you feel like Desmond played this season? To be honest, uh, he probably leveled off a little bit this year, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, uh, Des could be better. But uh, yeah, he's a playmaker on our team. Uh, he's made plenty of plays, uh, whether in special teams or on the nickel. Uh, we like him. So, uh, but we all can be better. What do you, what do you feel like the, the issue was? Because he's obviously a very talented player. Uh, those are some of the things that we're looking at now, to be honest with you. How satisfying was it to see Mike Williams and Austin make the jumps that they did this year? Uh, it was very satisfying because that's what we brought those guys here for, especially Mike being seventh overall. Uh, I think he's gotten better every single year. And the most impressive thing about Mike was he had a sore knee for the most of the season, and he played through it. And so uh, that was some, some show some toughness there, you know, and uh, that was that was impressive. But Austin, you know, he, he's just so inspiring to be a rookie tryout, uh, to make this football team and to do the things that he's doing. Uh, he just he's a great example for everybody in that locker room. Anthony, what words of wisdom did you have for Nasir Adderley as he approaches the offseason based on what happened his rookie year? You know, he just uh, he got down a little bit. Uh, I, I don't believe he's ever been hurt before. And sometimes, you know, kids don't know how to handle that. And so you just, you just have to keep encouraging him and just let him know that, you know, he's not letting the team down by not being there. He's got to get himself right, get healthy, and we know he can make plays. Come on, Bull fans. You want some more of this? Click subscribe. Hit this button right here. Click this button right here and you can get all of this that you want. Come on, Bull fans.